Hello and welcome to ET Garage YouTube channel. I want to thank everybody that subscribed so far. If you haven't subscribed, go down there, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, leave comments. That all helps my channel grow. I'm up over 500 subscribers. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I need a thousand in order to get monetized and hopefully that'll pay for all these videos that I do, you know, projects that I do in these videos, uh, which would be real helpful. Um, today's video is going to be about Moats Extreme ALDL ALDL USB based data logger cable. And uh, the reason I'm going to this cable is I usually use my uh, ALD Droid to data log, and uh, I use my phone and uh, and that uh, always worked fantastic for data logging. But uh, ever since I updated to Android 11, I haven't been able to get it to connect. I have no idea why. Um, there's another software program for connecting via my uh, Bluetooth device. Because this is the other cable that I used. I did a video, you look through my uh, data logging videos. I'll leave a, I got a playlist. I'll leave a link somewhere up there. But uh, this is the uh, Bluetooth device that I use from 1320 Electronics. This thing works really fantastic, uh, especially with my phone and my other uh, tablet. But uh, like I said, for some reason, ever since I updated to uh, Android 11 on my phone, it won't connect. I can not use my older phone. I can use this tablet, and that works. But I like the ability to use my laptop, which is Windows-based, and that never wants to connect to any Bluetooth device, even though it has it. it. Once in a while, you can get it to connect, and then it's buggy as hell. So I gave up on that, and I uh, decided to get a cable. I used to have the uh, Red Devil River one. Had that for years, and from bouncing around in the car and stuff, it broke, and it's no good. Uh, so I decided to invest in another cable, the Moats cable. And I have to say, this is the best cable I've ever used. It connects quicker than anything, and I'll go into more into that here in a few minutes. But it uh, comes with uh, plenty of cable. And uh, it has the connecting device there that transfer all the data from OBD1 to the USB so you can use it with your whatever device you're using. And of course, it has the switch for switching from 10 ohms to open. 10 ohms is for uh, older OBD1 vehicles. They transfer it at a slower baud rate, so you have to engage that in order to get it to work. I have a 90 Corvette, which has the higher baud rate, and I don't. I just leave it in the open position. But uh, basically, on uh, OBD1, check out my other videos. Like I said, 12-pin connector. Uh, old, as far as I know, old GM vehicles use the. 12 pin up to 95 and then on the Corvettes they switched to the 16 pin. I guess they were getting ready for the OBD2 which came out in 96 which is 16 pin. I don't know why they did that. I'm pretty sure most has an adapter for that if you need it. But uh, this is a 12 pin and uh, it's pretty simple. You plug it into your OBD point, this end here of course, which is on the old GM vehicles that I know of are located underneath the dash. Of course, other vehicles will vary and I believe uh, some of the other cars from that era that uh, were uh, not domestic, the US, in those words, uh, Japanese and European cars, may have used different connectors. I'm not familiar with them, so I'm not gonna go into it. But you just reach underneath your dash and plug it in. Uh, make sure the cover is off if you have one. Uh, they're usually pretty hard to find, so you probably don't have to worry about it. And uh, you plug, of course, the other USB at, and then USB into your USB port. Blah, blah, blah. Here, excuse me. And it connects. And hopefully you guys can see this. And then you go to Tuner Pro, open that up. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Tuner Pro or any type of OBD1 uh, data logging and tuning, you need to file specifically for your vehicle. Before you even invest in this equipment, you wanna do your research, make sure you can get the files. 
especially if you have Ford or another type of vehicle. I'm not familiar with them. Like I said, uh, all my tuning experience and data logging experience has been on this 90 Corvette. So that's what I'm familiar with. Basically, turn your car on and the one thing specific to a 90, starting in 90, they started using a CCM computer or a body computer, which is buried in there to dash. And you need to silence that. So you need to have the correct file that automatically silences that when you connect. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect. And uh, that was what causing the problem on my phone ever since I upgraded to Android 11. Uh, another data logging software I have on that phone connects no problem. So it's it's not the phone. It's just something specific to that software. I have worked with the developer to try and fix it. As far as he knows, I'm the only one having that problem. So I guess it's just specific something to my phone. But anyway, getting back to this, I'm going to connect. Go up here. Let me see if I can get a better picture there. If you're not familiar with Tuner Pro, up here are those arrows, acquire data. And I'm going to acquire the data. And down here it's saying connecting. And it should connect. Yep, it connected. That's the fastest this thing has ever connected on my 90 Corvette. And another way to tell that it's connected is you look at the TPS sensor. That's going to say your throttle position sensor, your gas pedal. You can see it going up and down. And that's how you know it's connected. And another thing is on the 90 up Corvettes, we've got, I believe it's. I'm not sure if it's the same on 96, but <coughs> excuse me. You'll see that flashing light. That tells you that the CCM has been silenced, so you can collect data. It will do the same thing when you use a GM Tech One computer, uh, which I have a handheld Tech One computer. It'll do the same thing when you connect. It'll flash and, and silence the CCM, but it's all connected and. Uh, you can tell, you know, readouts and stuff, the air temperature, engine temperature. Let's just crank it over real quick. I got the garage door closed, so I ain't gonna run it long. Let's see it, everything's working. Just like it should. And I'm not gonna sit here and warm it up with the open loop, but obviously because I'm in the garage. And uh, that's just to just demonstrate to you. Oh well, oops, I turned the key off. See where I'm getting that uh, DA connected error? That's because I turned the key off, turn it back on and it connects again. So uh, if you turn your key off, you're gonna get disconnected, of course. And uh, there we are, we're connected again. Uh, I have other videos, I'll leave a link up there to them. That's on my, uh, for data logging and all that stuff, I have a whole playlist like I said I'll leave that link up there if I haven't already and uh, this is without doubt the quickest connecting cable I have ever had uh, the Red Devil River one I was always buggy even when new and it always it would never connect that quick I don't know what, what its problem was and I had the short little cable so you had to use an adapter to extend it uh, now I'm not sure if I can get this cable to work with my my other device. Where is it? I used to be able to use the ALD River one with it, but because of the type of the adapter I had on it, it would uh, I was able to connect it. I I don't have the proper cable with me to plug that in and into the side port that I needed the mini USB connector. And I'm not sure if that'll work with that or not. I'm pretty sure it says it only works with the Windows devices. So, I don't know. I'll play around with it and try it. And hopefully it will. And, uh, anyway, anyone who's interested in data logging, I hope this is helpful. And, uh, like I said, the reason I use Tuner Pro is I like to use the history files. And, uh, this here will all populate. And, uh, Basically, I usually use my phone to do it. And using the phone, I then transfer the files to my either my home PC or this laptop. And then I'll generate the history files that way. Uh, by using the laptop directly hooked it to it while driving, it will self-generate. And I could either self-generate it while driving, of course, and while data logging or I can 
just data log and later on play the data log back and it will repopulate it. And here I'll start the car up again to show you what I mean by populating. basically what you do is you collect this data and then you'll transfer it use that data to make adjustments to your other tuning aspects of the uh, engine and uh, let me see I'll open up a table here do, 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 by American efficiency table you'll take that data and you can use a mathematical equation for each cell and do it that way or there's a program that automatically does it for you uh, maybe one day I'll do a video on that if I get enough requests. But uh, for now, I guess that's about it. Let me turn this off. Let me disconnect Tuner Pro. There, I'll disconnect it. Turn the ignition off. And uh, like I said, that's a whole other. That's a whole other thing. I may have gone into it in one of my other videos. Like I said, check them out. If not. Go down the comment section and leave comments. And if I like get enough requests, I'll try and make a video specific for my 90 Corvette tuning. So what applies to my 90 should also apply to the 91 Corvette. Then after that, 92, of course, they went to the LT1, which is different. So it would be only for those two years. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And uh, check out my other videos. Go down there, subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Everybody have a great day and God bless.